What's up guys, it's Multiplier and today we are looking at camel fat. It's a much requested tutorial that I finally got a chance to do now that I've got a copy of it. And yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. And today I'm gonna to kind of run you through a few tips and tricks as well as pretty much what every button does, simply because it's a really, really kind of understandable plugin. It's not too overly complicated, uh, but it still does a lot of quite complicated and quite cool stuff just without overloading you with buttons. And uh, yeah, I'm really stoked on it. So let's get uh, straight in there and let me show you what this thing does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you it um, on this little bit of a bass loop that I've got in my sample pack folder. Sounds a bit like this. Should be ideal because there's a little bit of an attack going on. Um, it's a reasonably clean sound. There is a bit of clipping going on as you can see, but fuck that, it will get masked. So yeah, let's uh, load up Camel Fat and I'll tell you what it does. So if you don't know what Camel Fat is, it's a distortion plugin. It does a few other cool things like some filtering, some uh, EQing, so, uh, some really cool compressing. But fundamentally, it's just a nice and simple distortion plugin with a few basic controls. Uh, a few basic controls that sometimes do quite a lot. So for example, on the compressor, it's not just a clean and simple compressor. It's doing a lot of fancy kind of analog modeling and doing some really cool stuff. So even though it doesn't have too many buttons, it, it does do some really cool things. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up kind of the, the default patch because the default patch, I say default patch, like a clear patch because the default already has some stuff on it. So if we just click this kind of main value readout bit and then do clear preset, that will kind of load up a blank preset so I can explain what each thing does. Now it does have a load of really, really cool presets. If you click value readout, you see we've got like bass. Uh, look at the default, we've got tons here. I mean, pages and pages of it, drums, guitar, pads, rhythmic mix. So you can see there's probably a, a few hundred presets here. Really, really cool stuff. So if you're not feeling too creative, you can just kind of whack a preset on and just kind of see what comes out. Some of them are quite subtle, some of them are pretty cray cray. But yeah, the preset's pretty cool. Um, but it's not too hard to really understand what each button does. So I'm just gonna run you through it because I'm sure you guys can kind of understand this. It's really not too complicated, but Understanding it allows you to do some really cool stuff. And you don't even have to use it necessarily as a distortion plugin alone. I mean, it does some cool stuff with the compressor in particular that you can just kind of whack on almost anything. Even if you don't want to distort it, you can just say, turn on the compressor a bit by itself and just do a bit of compressing. So there's no reason why you can't do that or use the multi-mode filter. But yeah, let's get into it. So Camel Fat, it's kind of a, it's a, it's like a multi a multi stage effect basically. So you've got a few things happening. So if I remember the order correctly, you've got uh, this section over here, the band pass filter, BP filter. So that happens first, and then you got the distortion, and then you got the flanging, and then I think that's the right order. In fact, fuck it, let's very quickly look it up. Uh, if we just do camel fat manual, because the order is quite important. It is somewhere down here. I can find it. Somewhere, 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 somewhere. Should have loaded this up in advance. Wait, wait, if I can scroll not too fast. This is going out, this is going mental. This is going mental. Oh, now my computer's getting hot. What is going on? This is a disaster. This is a disaster. Oh, fuck it. Oh, we had it a second ago. There it was. I'm doing too much. Uh, why is it scrolling like a crazy fucker? Right, scrolling slowly, scrolling slowly, scrolling slowly, scrolling slowly, scrolling slowly. We're pretty much there. There you go. Oh, we, we too high, too high, too high. Yeah. So we've got the bandpass filter, then we've got some distortion. Oh, it's the multi-mode filter next, not the flanger. So that is this bit, MM filter. And then we have the flanger and then the magic EQ and then the compressor at the end. So yeah, you can see it kind of happens all in a particular order. To be honest, you can pretty much forget that order and just kind of do things as you like, but it can be useful to know kind of in which order stuff happens. So yeah, we got this bandpass filter and let me show you how that works. So each of these little sections, they're kind of, if you forget what section's which, you can see it's got like a black border, kind of each section, so you don't get the knobs all muddled up. If we see these little on buttons here, so if you kind of have a look here, there's an on button here. There's like an on button here, an on button here. These on buttons just turn on each particular section. So when we loaded up the clear preset, it just basically turned everything off and set everything to the default. So if we turn on the bandpass filter, I'll show you what it does. So the settings are reasonably kind of obvious. So it's a bandpass filter, so it's like a low pass filter and a high pass filter. By default, everything will come through. 
But then naturally, as we pull this kind of low low pass, this kind of low slider for the low pass filter up, it just kind of pulls that low pass filter up. Reasonably self-explanatory, and then you've got the high pass doing a similar thing. Pretty cool ship. What I really quite like about this is you can see how, as you kind of pull it up, you've got almost like a like a lit up section, which is your band that's been passed. It's a nice little touch. It's a nice little touch. It just helps you visualize what's going on. Sometimes a lot of plugins can kind of throw knobs at you and you can't. You have to kind of imagine what they're actually doing because it doesn't make it clear. This makes it nice and clear. You've got the link button, which if you kind of have like a, a fixed distance, you hit the link button there, whack and then kind of slide it about, links the two together. It's quite nice for doing sweeps. And then you've got your obvious resonant settings for the filter, um, just kind of pulls up the resonant frequency around the particular lower high pass. There you go, it's normal sort of resonant stuff. And then this thing is called a band reject mix. Basically what this does, by default when it's on the far left, it basically doesn't do anything, but when you pull it to the right, it mixes uh, a copy of the unprocessed signal uh, in at the end. So it's it's almost like the wet dry, but not quite the same. So you can kind of have a play around with that if you want to send some of the unprocessed signal to the end of the chain. Because uh, remember, stuff happens in a chain, bandpass filter, MM filter, and so on. Uh, this just kind of sends a little arrow to the to, to the far end of the of the chain. Um, don't, don't really use that one too often, but it's nice to know you can send a bit of the dry signal through. It's pretty cool. Um, next, let's go on to the more interesting bit. Uh, we're going to skip the multi-mode filter because I want to get onto distortion because that's a really cool bit. So we hit distortion. Notice nothing happens. That's because what we need to do is we need to play with these four little options. So each one of these is a different distortion algorithm. Now. Shall I explain what? Yeah, I'll explain what each one does. So tube is, it's nice and it's called kind of like tube distortion. So it's kind of reminiscent of the kind of analog warmth kind of thickening out of distortion. So it's not too aggressive, but it just gives it a nice kind of thick, warm sort of vibe. So Again, it's one of the things best used in moderation just to add a bit of thickness and warmth and weight to something. Really cool stuff. You have Bit Crusher, that's kind of like your really kind of digitally distortion, kind of high frequency, a bit kind of bit cray cray. It's pretty mental, bit kind of digitally. You've got a mechanical. It's like tube, but probably one level up in terms of the kind of the aggression. Uh, really, really nice. It's kind of a bit different sounding. It's got a nice kind of thickness and nice characters and nice tonage to it. And then you've got a exciter, which is pretty much like Bit Crusher, but not quite as uh, crazy. Which isn't doing much on this particular sound, but it's, it's just imagine it. it's like Bit Crusher, but just not quite as kind of harsh in the, the upper frequencies. But really, really cool stuff still. Uh, so that's the distortion. Um, you have the MM filter. In fact, we're going to skip over that for now because I want to show you the compressor because the compressor is really, really cool stuff. So if I turn the compressor on. So but literally, um, just by pulling up this amount, it just kind of tailors the amount of compression you're doing. Now, what's really cool about this is it's got some really, really cool algorithms doing what it's doing. I don't know what exactly it's doing, but I know it's doing some sort of analogy sort of modeled stuff. It is doing some cool stuff for kind of some soft limiting, I think, because it's giving it a bit of saturation. It's just got a really nice kind of like character to it, a nice sort of sound, without you having to worry about ratios and attack times and release times and loads of complicated shit you don't really need to worry about. It just does it all in one lovely knob. I mean, check this out. I mean, you can vary the release time, but I know because I was playing earlier, this particular re release time sounds really cool with this preset. I mean, how cool is that? It's 
So it's done like a really nice amount of compression and all of that's done is literally just pull up the amount, play with the release for about all of four seconds and go, right, that sounds sick. Really, really, really cool. So I mean, what I think I will be doing is just using the compressor by itself sometimes, just because it's a really nice, simple compressor that does a really good job on basses in particular. Really, really cool. And then you have this P button. This P button is mental. It basically is P for fat, P-H-A-T. It just makes everything better or different, but usually better, so. So yeah, it just makes everything better. It does some other cool stuff. No idea what it does, but just click it. If it sounds cool, sweet. If it doesn't, unclick it. Um, Magic EQ has a similar P button over here. But yeah, P for fat. Really, I, I really love little features like that that don't really explain what they do, but sometimes it sounds awesome. Really, really cool. Um, Magic EQ. I know we're doing things in a weird order, but you know what? Fuck it. That's just how I roll. Uh, Magic EQ. It does a bit of kind of EQ as well as some other cool little stuff. It's not a simple EQ. Similar to the compressor, it's doing some other fancy stuff with, uh, I think it's modeling some analog stuff and probably doing a bit of limiting as well. Maybe some compression. I don't really know, but it's just doing some cool EQ based process and you don't have to worry about too much what it's doing. So if we turn it on, I wonder if it'll sound nice or not with uh, this particular bass sound. So yeah, that P definitely is doing some sort of saturation, but um, yeah, have a play around with that. I'm not exactly sure too much exactly what it's doing, but it's doing some cool stuff with EQ. Sounds really great on kicks in particular. Um, drums, it can sound really cool on. This tune knob just kind of tunes in the frequencies it's kind of EQing, so you have to kind of fine tune the tune knob depending on the sample you're using it on or the, the MIDI instrument using it on. But yeah, really, really cool stuff. The Magic EQ just gives it a nice little bit of character, a bit of extra interest, bit of extra something, something uh, that you couldn't do easily just by whacking an EQ on because it's doing more than just a simple EQ. Cool shit, and it has this fat button, P for fat, which is awesome. I love these little buttons. Really, really cool. Uh, there is a flanger, not a big fan of it. It does a bit of flanging and stuff, um, as you'd expect. It won't do a huge amount on most presets. What is nice about it is it's not over the top. A lot of flangers are way over the top. Uh, but yeah, have a play around with that um, once you're doing some other processing, just see if you like it. Not really my thing, but you know what? It's nice to have it there as an option. It doesn't get in the way if you don't want to use it. And then we have MM Filter, which isn't that obvious unless you've played around with a lot of plugins before. So MM Filter is basically a multi-mode filter, which is it does a lot of different filters. Uh, now, only just really one at a time, even though some of them are non-trivial. But if you click this kind of readout section here, you can see all the different filters. It's got stuff like... You gotta try and figure out what each of these little things mean. So you got stuff like LP2, that'll be probably a two pole low pass filter, um, BQ, and then there's a fat one. So the fat one's probably doing some other like saturation at the same time. Um, so you have to kind of just have a look and figure it out. Now you can look in the manual if you wanna figure out what all of these different things mean, or if you're kind of really good with plugins and stuff, you can kind of recognize a few of the, the letters and figure out exactly what's going on. But it's worth knowing the HQ versions, uh, basically, a, using higher like sample resolutions in their modeling. So it's just better, sounds slightly nicer, but it's more CPU intensive. Now, if you've got a ball in PC like me, or ball in Mac, I should say, uh, high quality mode's fine, so I definitely always choose it. But it's worth knowing they will use a bit of extra processing power. Not power, power. And uh, yeah, some other cool stuff like Format, Pegan, Notch, Comb, Ring Mod Tube, stuff like that. So just have a play around with the filters. They do some cool stuff. And basically what they do is they just, it's basically filtering, but you can do some, where it gets really, really cool is with the, what's called envelope following aspect of it. So when you pull up this envelope bit, what that does is it means the, the filter kind of follows the envelope of the incoming sound. So if you look at the sample, we see how there's, oh, oh done something mental, there you go. See how it kind of, it's got an envelope, it's got a shape to it, it's got a dynamic, so it goes kind of up and then flat and then down. Depending on how we play around with these, these envelope settings, and in particular stuff like the cutoff, the resonance, the attack and release, stuff like that, um, it basically, that determines how the, fil the filter kind of moves with the sound. It just gives it a really nice kind of sound and a really nice movement and dynamic. So uh, let's have a little bit of a play around with it. It works a lot better with some distortion on, so we'll just whack a bit of distortion on and 
Um, what might sound nice? Let's try this one. Uh, so we've got a bit of distortion now. Let's turn on the multi mode filter and then let's get a bit of. I'm going to pull up this envelope thing and then play around with the settings to get a bit of movement and a bit of coolness uh, with the envelope following filter. That sounds cool, it's really subtle. Let's try and find a more obvious sounding one. And of course this mix one basically is almost like the dry wet mix. So. There you go. So you can at least hear it. This sounds completely shit. This this were uh, this high pass filter, but at least here's the filter moving with the envelope. So you see the filter is actually moving. A lot of the times you don't want to do it necessarily in a really over the top way, but it's quite cool. It just adds a bit of movement. It's kind of like reasonably standard audio processing technique, just having the filter move with the envelope. Um, just because it adds a bit of movement that, and it adds some kind of filter and adds some character that's related to the initial sound. So it sounds nice and natural and doesn't sound wrong and out of place. It's really, really nice. Um, now what I will do is, are there any other cool buttons that's worth noting? You've got the LFO in the middle, that's easy to overlook. Um, so that's reasonably simple to use as well. You just kind of hit the massive on button, obvious. Um, you've got two LFOs, LFO 1 and LFO 2. You activate them by doing some clicking. And um, you can see just by clicking it, you've got a target. So you can choose within reason anything that's useful here, uh, which is pretty cool. And then you've got the, the type of LFO, so some cool standard shit. You've got like squares, signs, ramp up downs, triangles, etc. You've got the depth, which is again standard, and then you've got the rate, which you can also tempo sync as well with this uh, rate sync, which will sync it with the tempo of the track. So if you didn't have it on, then the rate will basically be just in time and it'll just kind of won't be related to the BPM of the track, but you turn it on and then each time you move the rate a bit, as you see in the value readout at the top now, if I move it, it says like one bar, half bars, quarter, etc. So it kind of, the LFO moves as a interval of the, the tempo, the BPM of the track. So it all stays in time, which is sometimes what you want. Sometimes you don't want it. So you just unturn it on, turn it off even. Cool shit. And then if you want to get really cool, you can even play around with this XY controller. So you can, can control two parameters at once and get mental, uh, which you just kind of choose the X and the Y with these settings here, as you'd expect. And that's it. That's basically everything on Camel Fat. How easy was that? Uh, 18, 20 minutes, but it was comprehensive and it showed you everything you need. Best thing to do, whack a few pre uh, get a few samples up, whack them through a few, few presets just to kind of get a, a feel for some of the sounds it can make. Um, but a lot of the times you don't want a really complicated sound. Like a lot, some of the presets are a bit complicated, so it can be a bit like, ah, that sounds a bit mad. So you can just click it, clear preset, and just turn things on one at a time. Believe me, there's not many knobs. You can definitely figure this stuff out. It's not like, say, Isotope Trash, where there's so many buttons everywhere. It can do a lot more, but it takes a while to program. And a lot of the times, you don't want to have to worry about stuff. You just want to go, damn, I need that bass a bit thicker. Hit it on, turn it up, boom, I'm there. Or I just want to give that a little bit of warmth. Boom, whack it on, two knobs later, you're there. Nice and simple. And that's what I like about this. It's, it's a nice sounding distortion plugin because there are fucking millions of distortion plugins. This sounds nice and it gives you just a nice number of uh, knobs to play about with. Not too many, but enough to really get shit sounding just how you like. But uh, yeah, that's Camel Fat for you. Hopefully you've liked it. And um, yeah, it's Camel Fat version 3.5.1.630. How's that for you? Oh, I forgot one really cool button, randomize at the top. Basically randomizes stuff. Does it randomize everything? I don't know. It's not randomizing everything. I thought it randomized more shit. Maybe if I choose a preset. 
There you go. Choose a preset, then hit randomize, and it will randomize some stuff. Um, actually, does it only randomize shit you got turned on? It does, yeah. Oh, cool. Important, important bit I forgot to mention. Literally just discovered this now. Anything you got turned on, by the looks of things, you, they've got to be turned on in the first place. That's apparently really important that I kind of overlooked at first. And then when you hit randomize, just press it like 14 times and it will randomize all your settings, which can be quite nice if you're just not feeling creative or, I don't know, you're just like, oh, I just want something, something, but I don't quite know what I want. Just hit randomize, just keep pressing it, keep listening, and eventually something will sound cool. I mean, I wonder what will happen. Let's give it like live improv jazz. Let's just improvise. See, that's kind of cool and different, a bit kind of like, whoa, what's going on? So you can just kind of, yeah, hit randomize and boom, away you go. Lovely. And uh, yeah, that's camel fat. Boom, I've been multiplying. It's been a tutorial. It's been, been awesome. It's been lovely. It's been emotional. Let's uh, stop recording.